Hello, I'm Father Edward Looney. It's noon central and I invite you to stand and we'll begin by praying the Angelus. The angel of the Lord declared to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh, dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Mass today from the Chapel of the Nativity located at the headquarters of Relevant Radio in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Again, I'm Father Edward Looney, and I'm delighted to be able to celebrate Mass with all of you today who are listening through the radio or watching through the Relevant Radio app or online at relevantradio.com. Answer us, Lord, for your mercy is kind. In the abundance of your mercies, look upon us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With During this season of Lent, we are called to penance for our sins. Let us call to mind now our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, look with compassion on our weakness and ensure us your protection by stretching forth the right hand of your majesty through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, if you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy, satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. Then the Lord will guide you always and give you plenty even on the parched land, he will renew your strength, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. The ancient ruins shall be rebuilt for your sake, and the foundations from ages past you shall raise up. Repairer of the breach, they shall call you, restorer of ruined homesteads. If you hold back your foot on the Sabbath from following your own pursuits on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, if you honor it by not following your ways, seeking your own interests, or speaking with malice, then you shall delight in the Lord. And I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. I will nourish you with the heritage of Jacob your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. 
Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Incline your ear, O Lord, answer me, for I am afflicted and poor. Keep my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for to you I call all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my pleading. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the customs post. He said to him, follow me. And leaving everything behind, he got up and followed him. Then Levi gave a great banquet for him in his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were at table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes complained to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus said to them in reply, Those who are healthy do not need a physician, but the sick do. I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Words of the Gospel. May our sins be wiped away. As we are in these first days of the Lenten season, we've made these Lenten resolutions in a sense. We have decided how it is that we wish to take up more prayer in our life, how we want to exercise penance in our life, and how we wish to give alms. The scripture readings, especially this reading today that we hear from the book of the prophet Isaiah, is one that seems like it can become kind of a guide for our way of life. It could be a guide for our Lenten observance. And maybe if you're one of those people who are like, I don't know what I want to do for Lent. I know it's three days in already, but Maybe today this reading is speaking to us, or maybe it's even inviting us to a deeper conversion of life. That's what the verse in between the glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, said today. I take, ple I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, but rather in his conversion that he may live. So the Lord wishes conversion that conversion was on display in our gospel for Levi, the tax collector who leaves everything behind to follow Jesus. So we look at these things that Isaiah speaks about that, in a sense, require a bit of conversion in our life, a decision on our part to say, this is how I want to live my life. Thus says the Lord, if you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech... Focus on the last, malicious speech. So if you remove from your midst malicious speech, what does that mean? Well, maybe it means the people we surround ourselves with and the conversations that we participate in. Maybe there's malicious speech that is going on as maybe we talk about our brother or sister in those conversations. So we want to remove that speech. I was always struck by one of the lines of St. Paul in one of his letters. He says, let, let no evil talk pass your lips. Say only the good people need to hear. Things that will really build them up. So remove malicious speech. Maybe it's that gossip in our life, but maybe it's you take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Maybe you casually say, oh God. Maybe you say malicious things or the things you talk about maybe are not as virtuous as they ought to be. Well, 
Today, the prophet Isaiah says, remove from your midst this malicious speech. It's an invitation for us to a conversion of life. If you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, you know, one of the marks of the Lenten season is almsgiving. It's to give to support those who are in need. Maybe it's to give some food away to a local food pantry, to donate some clothing that you have in excess. How can you make the life of someone else better that from the abundance of what we have, we are able to give to another person? It says, if, if these things happen, well, then light shall rise for you in the darkness and the gloom shall become for you like midday. The Lord will guide you always. The Lord will guide you always. Isn't that really what we want? That we want the Lord to guide our steps, to guide our thoughts, to guide our actions each and every day. Now, the other aspect of this reading today that the prophet Isaiah perhaps invites us to a greater conversion of life is if you hold back your foot on the Sabbath, he's saying, don't walk on the Sabbath. You know, if you hold back your foot, if you stay away and do the things of God from following your own pursuits on the holy day. So keep your foot along the Lord's paths. Don't do these other things on the Lord's day. This whole paragraph at the end of Isaiah's reading today speaks about making holy the Lord's day. Maybe that's a point, again, for examination uh, of conscience. How do I make use of my Sunday? Do I do vain work on Sunday, or do I really make it a day of rest with my family, with my friends? Do we truly try to rest and enter into what the Lord Jesus did? You know, I wrote this book, A Lenten Journey with Mother Mary, and one of the examination points in the very first week that I focus on is this idea of the Sabbath, that when Mary appeared in two different apparitions, she really emphasized the Sabbath. One of them particularly was Our Lady of La Salette. She said that so many people weren't honoring the Sabbath. During this time of pandemic, it might be a good opportunity for us to say, how can I give God more time on the day of resurrection that we anticipate, that Easter Sunday? Sunday becomes the Sabbath because of what happens at the end of this Lenten season. In our own life, we work towards that conversion of life and transformation of heart so that one day we might enjoy that eternal resurrection to be with Christ forever in the kingdom of heaven. The church throughout the world gathers in prayer this day. And so now let us lift up our voices and our hearts to our God, asking him to hear us as we pray for one another. We pray for Pope Francis and his intentions and for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for peace in the world and for an end to all terrorism and violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer for our nation and for all our government leaders, that they will protect and defend the fundamental rights to life and religious freedom for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for strong marriages and family life, that couples will embrace their vocation by growing in love for each other and raising their children to be disciples in the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died of our loved ones, our family members, and our friends, for the holy souls in purgatory. And we remember Father Harry Berryman, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And we pray for our St. Joseph, St. Gabriel, St. Nicholas, and Guardian Angel Society members, and for all of our listeners and supporters, that Our Lady of Guadalupe will intercede for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And we pray for all the prayer petitions that have been entrusted to Relevant Radio through the Pledge Drive, for those intentions that are now being posted online, that the Lord will hear them according to his marvelous providence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. O Lord our God, deepen our prayer this Lenten season 
so that as we come to know you, we might desire that deeper conversion of life to which the prophet Isaiah calls us. Help us to pray for one another this day, and may we rest assured of the intercession of Mary, the mother of God, and all the angels and saints who join us in our prayers from above. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise and grant that cleansed by its working, we may offer you minds well-pleasing through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me a judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection of mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, says the Lord. For I did not come to call the just, but sinners. The body of Christ.
For those of you watching or listening, this is a good time to make a spiritual communion. I wish, my Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with your most holy mother received you, with the spirit and the fervor of the saints. Let us pray. Nourished with the gift of heavenly life, we pray, O Lord, that what remains for us a mystery in this present life may be for us help to reach eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank you for joining us for Mass here on Relevant Radio. I hope that you'll join us again tomorrow at the same time, noon central for Mass. And be sure to join Father Rocky tonight on the Family Rosary Across America at 7 p.m. Central. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Abide graciously, O Lord, with your people who have touched the sacred mysteries, that no dangers may bring affliction to those who trust in you, their protector, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. And be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. O Lady of good health, our merciful Father chose you to be a powerful intercessor in times of trouble and woe. As in past centuries, when you have interceded to end contagious diseases, we implore you now to end the coronavirus, which is damaging the health of many and spreading fear in our communities. Teach us not to be afraid, to be courageous and generous in offering assistance to others, to live joyfully in the state of grace. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord, who throughout these forty days for us didst fast and pray, teach us with thee to mourn our sins and close by thee to stay. As thou with Satan didst contend and didst the victory win, O oh, give us strength in thee to fight, in thee to conquer sin. sacristy we keep sacred things that we need welcome back to the Lenten lessons on the mass premium edition today I'm going to take you inside of the sacristy right behind this door sacristy is a very special word used for a room adjacent to a church or a chapel and it's very close to the word sacred because in the sacristy we keep sacred things that we need for the liturgy. As I walk through the door, I turn off the alarm here in the code because there are things here which are very valuable. We walk through and welcome to the sacristy for the Chapel of the Nativity. Isn't this beautiful? Look at that woodwork, the millwork and such. And here is what's known as the vesting table. This is where we place the vestments for the priest who's going to celebrate Mass. And up above, we have a crucifix. It's a beautiful copy of the San Damiano crucifix that spoke to St. Francis of Assisi. 
You don't have to have a San Damio crucifix. I just think it's very beautiful. And on the wall are two um, items. One are the vesting prayers for the priest, and the other are prayers for before and after the Mass. I'm going to explain all of that to you. And just to the right of me, we see a picture of the Bishop of Green Bay, Bishop David Ricken, because he's in charge of all of the liturgy in the diocese. And we have a picture of Pope Francis because he is the Holy Father. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell you about the vestments. And the day after that, I'm going to tell you about all of the liturgical linens we use for the Mass. So stay tuned. I hope you can join us tomorrow for these premium editions of Lenten Lessons on the Mass.